Okay, welcome back everybody. And uh, today we're going to um, move on and uh, show you how to solve equations, or linear equations actually, with three variables. And we're going to consider three equations uh, with the three variables. And uh, a general linear system with three equations uh, will have this form here. All right, and notice we have a1x plus b1y plus c1z equals d1. So these are the coefficients here of our first equation. These are the coefficients of our second equation. And these are the coefficients of the third equation. And these are our constants, d1, d2, d3. Now you can see here that um, we can't eliminate uh, two variables at once. So we're going to have to step our way through this. And the way we step through it is going to be by what's called a Gauss elimination method. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the kinds of solutions. You remember that uh, in t with two equations and uh, two unknowns, we had uh, three different kinds of um, solutions. We had a single point solution. right? We had a line solution, which meant that we had an infinite number of solutions. And both of those were consistent systems. And we had no solution at all, where we had two parallel lines. Now, in the case of a, a linear equation with three, with three uh, variables, then we have what's called a plane, right, in 3D space. Right, so what we have then is um, three planes. And how can we get solutions when we have three planes uh, that we're going to look at together? and what kind of solutions can we get. All right, well, the first kind of solution is here, uh, where we have one single point. And you'll notice that we have the three planes all intersect at one point, which is right here. And so consequently, we have a consistent. So this is consistent because it has at least one point. All right, the next one we have is what if we have three uh, planes and they all intersect at a line? And so again, this is consistent, right? But of course, there's an infinite number of solutions. Okay. Right. Thirdly, again, we could have all three planes could actually be what we call coincident planes. So they're really all the same plane, just expressed differently. And so again, we have an infinite number of solutions. So this is a consistent system. Okay. Right, then we have two situations where we have uh, no solution. So we have this situation where we have uh, two of the planes are intersecting at a line, see here. and But this one here intersects at a different line, and these two intersect at a different line as well. So we have three different lines. There's no common solutions, so there is no solution. So this is inconsistent. Right, so there's no solution there. Right, next, we could have all three planes being parallel to each other. So again, there is no solution. And so again, this is inconsistent. So we need to keep in mind as we start solving these equations, uh, the kinds of solutions that we could get or not get. Now notice here, if we have no solution in which we have um, uh, the null set being the solution, in other words, it's empty, there's no solution set, then we're going to get some sort of inconsistency like we did with the, um, the two variable case. All right, now I want to work our way through a way in which we can actually solve this. As you can see, the amount of work that's going to be required because we've increased by one, one equation and one variable is going to be cons considerably um, more. And so we need to be very systematic by the way we do this. And we're going to develop what's called a Gauss elimination, elimination method. Now, the first thing to remember is, all right, there are a number of operations that we can do with these equations. Remember that we, number one, we can interchange, all right, the equations. All right, that does not change the solution. So we're quite entitled to do that. Number two, all right, you'll remember, all right, that we had, we could uh, multiply any equation by a non-zero constant, okay? And we remember we said it couldn't be a zero because we just get a zero equation. That doesn't help us at all. 
and number three was the one where we could actually add a multiple of one equation to another. All right, so we can add a non-zero multiple of one equation to a second equation. Okay, and this will produce a third equation. All right, and uh, that may be helpful to us. So what we are, our plan is to do is to take this uh, system. All right, so here's our system in general form. If we have non-zero uh, coefficients. And we want to take this system and we want to reduce it using the, uh, um, let's call them uh, operations above there, one through three, to reduce the system to the form, right here it is, um, and let's, we can change the, um, uh, change the, uh, of course they're going to be different coefficients, so let's call it just A now, plus B, Y, plus C equals uh, D, all right, but the next one, what I want to do is I want to reduce this by one variable, and so I will get an E, Y, say, plus, um, F, Z, uh, F, and equals G, say, for example. And then the final one would be H, Z is equal to, uh, let's suppose, K. All right. So in other words, we were reducing it down to this by one variable at each step. Now, when we get to this step, we can now solve for Z by dividing by H. Then I can take that Z and put it back up into here and solve for y. All right, this is called a backward or back substitution. All right, process. All right, so now that I have y, I've got z and y, and I put that in here and here and then solve for x. And that will give me my x, y, and z. Now, if any point I get an inconsistency, like down here in this last one here, where I get, say, 0 equals some non-zero, then I know this is an inconsistent system. If I get 0 equals 0 down here, then I know it's a consistent system, but it has an infinite number of solutions. Now, this process here is called Gaussian elimination. Okay, and so you have to step our way through this. And uh, we're going to do that now through an example. All right, now our first example here says solve the linear system of equations x minus 2y plus 3z equals 11, 4x plus 2y minus 3z is 4, and 3x plus 3y minus z is equal to 4. Okay, so notice we have uh, coefficients of 1, negative 2, 3 here. Uh, 4, 2, negative 3, and 3, 3, negative 1, and the constants are 11, 4, and 4. Okay, our first step one is to label the equations. All right, just like we did with the, the two variable case. All right, now we look through this and we say, all right, let's see if we can take a couple of these um, uh, equations and use those operations one through three to eliminate one of the variables. So I look through the equations and I say, okay, I've got a, a one X and minus two Y, but here I've got a four X plus a two Y. So if I was to add these two, I would eliminate the Y. So let's do that, step one. Well, let's step one up here, say. And here's step two. We're going to add equations one and two. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to make an extra step here. And we have 4x plus 
plus 2y minus 3z equals 4. Right, now notice what happens here. If I add these two, I get 5x. I get plus a 0y. And interestingly enough, I get a plus a 0z as well. When I add these, I get 15. Well, that's really telling me that I have 5x is equal to 15. So that's rather good because I eliminated two variables at once. Now, that's not going to happen all the time, but it just happened in this case. So this implies then that x is going to be equal to 15 over 5, which is 3. So I now already have a value for um, x. Right, next. Um, so we have uh, x is 3. We don't have y and z yet, so that's not going to be very helpful. Now what I could do is I could look at uh, taking the other two, any of the other two, so step 3, using equation 3 now. Right, I want to use equation 3 because it's not the one I've used yet and see if I can actually um, do something with uh, one of these equations to see whether I can eliminate a, a, a variable again. Alright, so notice here that uh, I don't want to eliminate x because I know what x is. So always keep uh, all right, in mind what you know. All right, so what I can do though is I look at exa um, equation 1 and I look at equation 3. They're different in sign for the z and I'm looking to uh, get rid of either z or y. And if I multiplied um, 3 by uh, equation 3 by 3 and then added equation 1 and 3, I'd get rid of the z. So let's do that. So I'm going to multiply 3 by 3. And I'm going to produce then uh, 9x plus 9y minus 3z is equal to 12. All right, so that's our new equation. That's our new equation 3, and I'm going to add that to equation 1. Okay, now when I add these two, right, I'm going to get a 10x here, and we're going to get a plus a 7y here, plus a 0z is equal to uh, 23 by the look of it. Okay, all right, so uh, that's what we have so far. And uh, let's see if we can uh, actually help to determine what this will be. All right, so really what I have is 10x plus 7y is equal to 23. Okay. However, since I know that, uh, so let's uh, now look at um, step four. Using the substitution... that x is equal to 3, we're going to solve for y. Okay? All right, so notice we have 10 times 3 then plus 7y is equal to 23. So I really have 30 plus 7y is equal to 23. So 7y is going to be equal to 23 minus 30 which of course is negative 7. So y is going to be equal to negative 7 over 7, which is negative 1. Right, so now I have uh, x is 3. Notice this here. And I have y is equal to negative 1. Now since I have two of the variables, okay, uh, step 5, we're going to use any equation any of the three equations, right, and x equals 3 and y equals negative 1 to find z. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the, uh, the, the equations and see which one will be good. Right, notice that here's x, we know x and we know uh, y. So we need to find z. 
So I mean the first one would be fine. So let's do that one. X minus 2Y. So what we have is X minus 2Y okay, uh, plus 3Z is equal to 11. All right, so we have uh, X is 3. Subtract 2. Be careful we have a negative uh, 1 for Y plus 3Z equals 11. So I have 3 plus 2 plus 3z is equal to 11. And so I have 5 plus 3z is equal to 11. And therefore 3z is going to be equal to 11 minus 5, which of course is 6. So if 3z is equal to 6, then dividing both sides by 3, I end up with z is equal to 2. So notice that we do have a unique exam answer, so step six, right, the, the uh, system of equations is consistent, right, with one point of intersection, right, namely, all right, it'll be the point, all right, um, 3, negative 1, 2, and remember it's a ordered triplet now, right, is going to be my uh, point of intersection.